Welcome to Rock of Faith. You can watch our services live, view our church calendar with up-to-date announcements, send a prayer request to our prayer team, and watch Dan Bennett's Bible studies. All this and more at roffont.com. The link is in the video description below. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Pastor. It's good to see each one here tonight. We say God bless you. If you're glad to be here, say amen. 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 I am glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We are one week away from celebrating Easter, a very special time for us. Looking for a special service on next Sunday. Would very much like you to ask and invite people to come. Uh, for the service, and I believe we're going to have a good time. We will be giving away treats, and um, Linda said there's other things. She brought some things to give away, too, so we'll have those for next <coughs> Sunday morning. And <coughs> um, we want to be praying for our, our services, and again, um, most of us here know what it is, but we are... Uh, really influencing certain people, and we're really doing a good job. So we really need to keep praying. Uh, the Internet is working good, and uh, we're helping people. Um, I got tickled at Bruce. I thought the same thing. We had several hits from Hong Kong, and I know that's where Gene is at, so I'm sure that Gene maybe be watching us from Hong Kong, and maybe they do get a lot more hits from Hong Kong. Because Jane's there, so I don't know, you know, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I get it. I got. I thought about that this morning. I thought, all right, well, maybe Jane's watching us. Um, we, I, I, I hope people will understand more and more that God's given us a job, and we got to get it done. And uh, this week, with those two events that that. I experienced, I'm going to share those again tonight. I, I just feel the, uh, an urgency to help people. Uh, they don't, they don't know what we know. And um, if you're not, if I feel, I feel really bad for like the situation, the 59 people that died in Vegas and the 17 in Florida and in other places, this young couple that died um, if they didn't know the Lord, they are lost forever. If just one of them out of Vegas didn't know the Lord, they're lost forever. And so what we're doing is important. And if people could, could grasp that, they, they'll pray for their neighbors. They will, they will pray for people because if, if they don't get Jesus before they leave the earth, come on, we all know it. If you're not saved when you leave the earth, wherever you are, that's where you're going to be forever, and uh, you need to hear from Jesus. You need to get saved, and we need to help people get there. So let's keep uh, praying for these uh, circumstances and events. Amen? Amen. Well, we're going to pray again um, for the military. Um, this uh, statement was given uh, by someone that knows military people. And they said that is really genuine and that we are helping people and what you're doing is very good. Keep it up. So we're getting ready to, um, to pray for these, uh, the military in the Middle East. We're going to pray for our list again. And, and don't take it lightly on your prayers because you don't know um, what God's going to do for us praying. I mean, you know, we may hear next week exactly what God's done, but what we're doing is is really critical, and we need to uh, we need help to help people. Yes, yeah, Sister Marilyn. Oh, okay. Amen. Let's remember Maddie, who has a, a growth, I guess you'd call it, and uh, let's remember her, and that is Sam's granddaughter, be her granddaughter, be his granddaughter. So let's remember 
uh, her tonight, and I like to remember everybody on our list. There's several people there. Um, like to remember this family that lost their mother. Uh, Matthew asked me to go on Friday, and then this other family for this young couple that just is around the corner from my house. So uh, we need to. We really need to pray for people. They don't know what we know. They don't. They don't know what we know, and so we need to. We really do need to pray for them. Uh, we're going to pray for the military. Then we're going to pray for those requests. Unless just you don't have to wait on me. You can call names. Just keep praying and pray for whoever you feel led to pray for. But we want to do that right now, and uh, this is our time for prayer. And so let's lift up these names. Let's lift up these people. Uh, they're depending upon us. So let's be obedient to God tonight. Amen. I'm going to hold this up. This is the military men and women in the Middle East. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your blessing and your anointing and your power will be with them, Father God, on every place they go, Father God, all their equipment, everything they own, Father, your blessing, your anointing, and your grace to go with them, Father God, and we pray for their families as well. We submit ourselves to you, Lord. We bind every devil, every hindering force in the mighty name of Jesus, and we loose your power and your anointing and your blessing on their behalf tonight. Father God, wherever they might be, Lord, as we clo grow close to Easter, Lord, it's a special time for them as well. May your blessing be special upon them as we go into this week, Lord, the Spirit of God to be with them, and we'll give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor, Father. In the name of Jesus, your power and blessing upon their lives, Lord. We give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Thank you for the victory, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. And Father, we lift up Sister Mary Lee's list, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Everybody that sick in their body, Father God, we ask you to touch them, Lord, and minister to their needs. Those with heart trouble, kidney trouble, back trouble. Remember our sister Esther, Lord. Thank you that she went home. Touch and heal, deliver and set free, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, for Maddie, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch and heal in the physical body, Father God. And for this family that lost their mother, Father God, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Protect them and bless them, Father God. And this other young couple their family. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll have mercy upon them, Lord, and your spirit will bless them and help them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And as we approach Easter, may you give us people and souls for our hire. Lord, let the spirit of God draw people into the house of God. Lord, we'd like to give people the information they need. Lord, we don't want them to leave this earth without Jesus. And so, God, we're praying that you will touch them and bless them and minister to their needs, Lord. Use every uh, effort available, Lord, to draw them to the house of God, and we'll give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lord, your word declares that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And, Lord, we will give you all the glory and all the praise and the honor. And we ask these things today in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Let's give him a clap offering tonight, if you would. <laughs> amen. Um, really? The batteries are gone? I don't know what the batteries are. Uh, batteries are too. I'm just, I'm just hearing a lot of distortion. If this early in the service, I'd rather switch it now. We got lots of microphones. <laughs> if if this one doesn't work, we'll go get another one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, thank you. Anyway, let's uh, if you guys can help us, let's let's do a song at this time, and we'll go from there. Amen. I can't. 
tell you why you're walking through this valley. And I can tell you just how long you've got to stay. And I can tell you why your heart feels so unsettled when this all will change. something you can lean on it's a promise that won't bend and it won't break it will keep you when your future is uncertain you're not out of grace Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for that song. We're going to go ahead and receive our evening offering. Uh, anything you can do to help is appreciated, and we do thank you for it. Uh, and once again, thank you for being here tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for this offering. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver. Lord, we ask you to minister to the needs of your people and as well as your church. In some way, somehow, return it to your people, and we'll thank you for it. Bless our efforts on tonight, and we'll thank you for it. We ask it in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, amen. If you have an offering, please bring it to the storehouse of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have um, just a few announcements. Um, we're going to have our regular service on Wednesday uh, at 6 o'clock, and then next Sunday, we're going to just do our Easter morning service. Um, it will be at 11 o'clock. We'd like you to invite uh, everyone out that you know. 
and we're going to have a very special time. Um, we're we're going to work on something. I talked with Bruce and Brian about it uh, to supplement uh, in the evening service. We we I don't know if we'll do it this week or not, but we're going to figure out something we can do when we're not here to put it on for people. We'll just that will just come later. Maybe I'll do something by my fireplace. Can I get it? <laughs> And I'll show my dogs, and uh, we'll have some fun, fun, something fun to do. Anyway, we'll figure something out, but uh, no, no evening service. Most people will be with their families, and so I, that'll be good, and that's that's fine. So let's be in prayer for the service. So that makes next Sunday service really important. So let's pray for it that God will bless us on Sunday, and for people, Amen. That that really need it. Um, uh, <clears throat> once again. Um, we gave the the notice of the military uh, 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 email to somebody, and they read it to a friend that's in the military, and they said it's really critical what we're doing to help other people. And and just like this, um, there's something in the neighborhood of 45 people watching the service. So we don't know how many people we're helping. And so we need to keep praying and keep believing and assisting uh, uh, people in whatever it is they have need of. And um, um, we're going to, I want to, just on my heart, but when I went to help with Matthew on Friday, um, and I went into the room where these people are, um, I just recognized that, and people really need my help, and they need other people, not just me. A lot of people could have done what I did. But they really needed someone to comfort them and to pray for them. And <clears throat> I think what where we're at is that, that, that opportunities are going to come. And um, I don't know that I'll get a chance to talk to anybody that's, that, that lost this young couple. I don't know anybody over there, but I realize that these events are taking place and somebody needs to talk to them. Somebody needs to witness to them some way or another. And even if you're leaving the world, if you will call upon the name of the Lord in sincerity, you can get saved. The thief on the cross did. So you need to have that information. If you got it, you might make it right and get out of here uh, and be in the presence of God. Amen. And so we really, really need to keep doing our job and, and keep trusting the Lord and um, using our faith for things that, that matter and not stuff that, that doesn't matter. Amen. <clears throat> anyway, we are uh, uh, we're blessed to, to, to be in a place, and I'm thanking God that we've been able to be free in the spirit to do what we feel like God wants us to do, that we allow the gifts to operate, that we pray for people, anoint them with oil, and we did get to do what God tells us to do. And thank God we have the freedom to do it. So we need to keep it up. And I don't know what's going to happen later on down the road, but for right now, we can do what God tells us to do. And there's no hindrance to it. So we praise the Lord for that. Amen. Uh, I have tickets for the ladies' banquet. And anybody that would like to go, if you want to see me tonight before you leave, we can get you a ticket for the banquet. It'll be Saturday, May the 5th, uh, $12 for adults, $7 for children. Um, we uh, are going to have our sister Carol there to minister. And so she's going to minister, uh, starts at 10 o'clock. And she'll be ministering to the people. And no one else will be there, which will make it really nice that we won't be in conflict with anybody. So um, praise the Lord. Amen. Um, on the end of the month is our annual church picnic, the 28th of May. So that's coming up as well. And so these events, seemingly though they're a little ways off, it seemed like they sneak up on us pretty quickly. So. 
let's be in prayer for these events, and then we'll get a chance to have some fun and fellowship on May 28th, and that's in the month of May. Uh, yeah. She is. She's coming at the end of April, April the 29th. She will be here. And that will be in the morning, 11 o'clock. She will be with us in that, on that Sunday. And at that date, uh, the next week must be May the 5th. Is that correct? So she'll be with us that Sunday and then that next Saturday. So that looks right anyway. Unless there's more days than April, then I'm counting. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Could I give a quick testimony, just real quick? I just want to say something real quick. Um, I was really blessed today. Um, I, something special happened for me that I didn't expect. Oh, I don't. Okay. Here we go. I'm not good at these. Um, anyway, uh, today is my birthday. You know. But um, I was so blessed because I heard from a childhood friend that I just happened to talk about in Sunday school today to Sister Mary Lee, and that's Karen. And Karen, uh, out of the blue, called me. Well, she knew it was my birthday, but I didn't expect to hear from her. But what's so wonderful is, is that, I, I don't cry. Uh, it's nothing about me, but um, when we became friends 52 years ago, I was 14, she came to our church, she came out of the Catholic Church, and she gave her heart to the Lord, and she thanked me tonight, because you know God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is forever and amen. And she thanked me for leading her to God. And that blessed my heart that, you know, it's, it stays with us. Uh, we, if we stay true to God, he stays true to us. Amen. And it shows me that um, she's in a good place. She's an I know. And then I got a phone call from Josie and Cinda, Cinda Stansel Wilson. They called me. Praise and Lord. Cinda and I got to talk. That you have known them since we were babies. Uh -huh. And um, Cinda was so wonderful on the phone. And we talked about the old church, just songs and different things. And we were so blessed on the phone, nobody wanted to hang out. So it was really hard, but God really blessed me with that today because I don't think things are coincidental. I really believe that that was a special blessing from the Lord for me today. And it was beautiful. I got blessed so much today. And things that I don't expect, but I, I just feel very privileged. And you know, I'm on that list, but I'm coming off that list. Because I'll tell you one thing, God has healed me of cancer eight years ago, and I'm healed. And with this liver thing that I have, I, I already got a letter from my doctor saying that there's no great concerns about my liver. There is no cancer, even all the way down to my small intestines. I have no cancer. My esophagus was at one point enlarged. It is now normal. I'm eating the way he tells me to eat. I'm doing what he's telling me to do. But I'm really trusting that it's by God's design. I really believe that my doctor is going to hear me say, see, it is reversible because God says. Yes. And I'm here until God says I'm not here. Amen. So that's what I believe. And I just, I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for every day I'm on this earth. And I do want to serve him all the days of my life. And I'm, today's just a beautiful day. And I felt like, um, of all the things, to hear from special friends and on this day, and I, I, I'm just privileged, and I'm so, so grateful Amen. for everything that God gives me, and I just want to say that, and I love the church so much for singing, not just to me, to James, to whoever else had a birthday, but you know, our church is a family, yes. and it's a family of love, yes. and that's what I love about our church, it's a family of love, and I just want to say that, and I love the church so much for singing, not just to me, to James, to whoever else had a birthday, but you know, our church is a family, and it's a family of love, and that love comes from Jesus, and you know, we were founded on that prayer, and the love of Jesus Christ in our lives, and if we stay true to him, he stays true to us, and if we follow his word, and we do the things we're supposed to do. We grow, we grow, we grow, and we, we please the Lord. But, you know, if we shy away from the Lord, it's not very well pleased. So we just have to always stay steadfast in prayer and stay grounded in the Lord. And I, I'm just I'm just full of love. I just have this whole heaven. It's like being reborn again. I don't know what it is today. You know, that love of Jesus is just Jesus. so sweet and so pure. And I just thank you for letting me take that down. Amen. 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 No, that's that's wonderful. It's uh, yes. I want to say something about Margo. Oh. Yeah. Please God. Look, when Margo's not here more than anybody in this congregation. Oh. I miss. Yes. Because I'm telling you, the spirits on everybody. Teresa, 
We can tell when Margo's here, Margo ain't here. More than anybody. Don't ask me why, I'm trying to put nobody else down. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, devil don't like Margo. <laughs> devil don't like Margo, but the devil's a liar. The devil's gonna burn, he's gonna burn, and Margo ain't. Margo's gonna be healed. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna happen. But with that Margo out here, I, I'm, I, I get lost. I, I, <laughs> well, I thank the Lord for this church. I Amen. Amen. It, we, we, we miss a lot of people, and we want to get them more in here that we can, uh, if nothing else, we can help them, and, uh, and we can go for that. But I want to just say this, too, what Margaret was saying, just about preaching my message, and I could say amen and go home. But um, there is something about Friday that just stirs my spirit. There's something about me standing in that, in that hospital room with that family and praying for them and did my best. I, I mean, it, you, you couldn't feel any more in the will of God than, than I did standing in that room with the, with that family. I don't, I don't even know. I never met any of them before I ever went in the room. And, um, and, um, the, apparently the one, uh, the, the daughter of the lady goes to church and I don't know where, their pastors go and the ministers of their church and that sort of thing. And here I am. I don't even know these people. And I got a chance to pray for them and minister to them. And I'm telling you, people need it. Um, and I don't know why people aren't going out there. They should be. This isn't the first one. I did a wedding. I don't know if it was the last summer or summer before, I guess. Um, oh. I don't know. I, I can't remember everybody anyway. But I got a call from somebody to visit somebody in the hospital up at San Antonio. They were stage four. Went up to pray for them, and, and they passed away. And the people, they go to a different church. They got a different pastor. And they asked me if I'd do the service, and could we do it here? I said, you can, and I will. We'll do it. <laughs> well, and we did the service right here. So whatever is going on out there, we are needed, church. You need to turn to your neighbor and say, somebody needs you. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you to minister to them. And I find that that, that there are things going on that, that is, is just necessary for somebody to do things. And I thought, I told Matthew, you know, if Jesus was here um, on Friday, I said, this is where he'd be. If Jesus was here, if he was walking the earth, this is where he'd want to be, you know. And I feel in, in a lot of ways that that people have got away. The, the scripture says that Christians have become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. It's not that they don't love God. It's they just love pleasure more. And um, it, it really, uh, we need to get away from that. And one of these days, the church will accomplish all the things that we're supposed to. But in the meantime, individually, we can get out there and, 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 and minister to people and, and God can touch their, their lives and make a difference. Amen. And it just seems like every week something happens that stirs me, that just tells me what we're doing is good. We get, we get a, an email from some soldiers in the Middle East saying thank you and we're and we want you to pray for us and we'll pray for you and it's just like out of the blue I mean it's just amazing and the first grade class and the lady with the hematoma and on and on and on we're able to minister to people and we want to we want to keep doing that amen um, I really feel as a whole our whole church um, I know I have worked really hard in reducing our budget to help us uh, to be able to stay here. And literally, literally, we have saved thousands of dollars the last four or five years, if nothing else, in Edison alone, uh, being able to reduce our, our, our bill to Edison. And so we're able to continue to pay all of our bills and do the things that we're doing to be on internet. We're still feeding twice a week and all the things that, that we do, we're able to do it even just with a small group of people. And so I thank the Lord for, it. but, but in all these things, just like being up at the hospital on Friday, I really believe it's what I'm supposed to do 
And if I if I gave some kind of excuse like, well, Lord, if you give me more money or give me more people or give me more this or give me more that, it, it isn't that. I just go do it. Get up and go do it. Amen. Paul was asleep, and night he had a vision, and a man from Macedonia said, come on over and help us. And they loaded the Toyota truck up, can I get a witness, and drove to Macedonia. Amen. <laughs> they went. They, y'all know, they got up, packed the stuff, the donkeys, and they went to Macedonia. Amen. It's service, service to God. It's just what he wants, and that's what we're doing. But I praise the Lord for have, being a part of the kingdom. And, and what I really know is if I wasn't doing what I was supposed to, I would have missed that Friday. I would have missed being where I was supposed to be on Friday. And I'm glad that, that I was here and, and uh, that everything worked out. I got a chance to, to help a family. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, God is blessing me in different ways. There's things that are happening for me and for the church that I've never seen. I've never seen them happen before, and God is using us. So we really thank the Lord for that, and I believe he's going to use this yet more and more. But it's it's a privilege. It's a privilege to, to, to be where God wants you to be and to do what God wants you to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going we're gonna to preach. We'll have to dismiss in a minute. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to be in uh, Mark 11. I'm going to read. A little down from where we started this morning, and I'm going to ask Sister Mary Lee with just a blessing on the word tonight, please. Dear Lord, we're so grateful to be in your house tonight. We thank you that you've given us a word, a roadmap to follow to heaven. We pray you'll bless our pastor as he brings the message to yes, us, God, and help us have open hearts to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's start in verse 11 tonight, if we could. And I'm going to go down a little bit, and then I'm going to share what's on my heart tonight. Amen. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he looked around above about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come to from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree uh, far off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, and the time for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And they would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, It is not, is, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Amen. We're going to stop right there tonight. Um, ma many times we've studied the last part of this chapter, but this is what's on my heart uh, tonight. Uh, Jesus just had about a week when he entered into Jerusalem. That's what I shared earlier uh, today, this morning, to get ready to finish his ministry. Um, he, as I sh shared this morning, I guess we can recap a little bit. But he was going to establish the the our which our tradition is of of communion and foot washing. There is no place that I can find in the New Testament where they kept the Passover, and so Jesus was going to fulfill all the whole law, everything that was in there. He was getting ready to accomplish to fulfill all of it. He and there was nothing left to do. That's why we don't hold the Feast of the Tabernacles or do the Passover or do any of the other feasts or sacrifice animals is because Jesus is our atonement. Amen. Um, I, I talked about it today, uh, this morning, about atonement really means to be bought back. 
And what he was getting ready to do is literally buy us off the auction block of sin. He's going to purchase everybody back, and he was getting ready to do that. Now, this is, this is what's been upon my heart, and I'm going to try my best to share it. Because there are, are different and difficult things that face us and that are in the future, we need to learn to develop our faith. We need to learn to pray um, more fervently because we don't know what's out there. And as I was studying this lesson, I began to see where Jesus had to develop himself to get ready to go to the cross. And um, we know that he spoke to the fig tree and and the fig tree dried up from the roots. He comes back and the, and the fig tree is, is dead. But what, what I'm heading towards is that you don't know what's on tomorrow and you must develop your faith because critical things are happening in our world today urgent things and as i went to visit this family i realized that i had an opportunity to share with this family my faith in god and to help them and encourage them and I just it's just not by chance I ended up there. It's just not by chance that Matthew asked me to go and 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 that I ended up in in the hospital. And so therefore the the responsibility of us is to continue in faith believing. As I as I share with people and I try to help people, I find that people are trying to twist and turn Christianity to what they want it. And the li little the literal translation, if you take a truth of the Bible and twist it, it's called heresy. And <clears throat> just let me tell you, that's not good. <clears throat> we we don't need to twist the scriptures and 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 turn them to mean something else other than what they absolutely mean. And so, therefore, we must develop our faith and become stronger in the Lord because there's stuff coming down the road that if we're not ready for it, it's just going to mow us over. And um, I don't think there's been a time since the Civil War that our country's been more divided. It's just my opinion. So many people are at conflict one with another that there are things happening that that are, are very difficult for people to deal with. Amen. And um, we as Christians, and especially those of us that have spent time studying the Bible, know many of the truths of the Bible that we could help and, and assist other people with. But we must grow stronger. In one place, Paul told the church, he said, I see that your faith groweth exceedingly. And one place he said he has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But in, in these two scriptures, it infers to us not only God gives us that faith to get saved, but also it's up to us to develop it. It's up to us to cause our faith to grow and to mature and to become stronger and better. And uh, what I'm sharing tonight is Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross and to face the journey that God had for him. Now, not Jesus did, Jesus, but it doesn't change the fact that things are coming that are more difficult and we must prepare ourselves for them. Amen. We know the story of Paul, how that he was on the ship and it crashed. He got, uh, got all safe to land. The angel said that they would. And he was getting fire, and, and as he was putting sticks on the fire, a snake bit him. Now, a lot of people thought that, boy, the sea didn't get him, but the snake's going to. But he shook the snake off in the fire, and he was safe. And they, and they called him a god, and they were going to worship him. <laughs> and people <clears throat> have absolutely no discernment. But the reality of it, Paul was ready for the snake bite. He had to know what Mark 16 had to say. Amen. Now, Jesus is going to get ready to go to the cross, and he's going to go into the Garden of Gethsemane. And when he gets to the Garden of Gethsemane, he's going to start praying. 
And his first prayer that he prays is, God, if there is any other way you can do this thing, please, let's do it. And he prays an hour on that fashion, at least an hour that we know about. And he goes back to the disciples, and they're all asleep, <clears throat> which a lot of Christians are asleep today. I mean, sound asleep. They don't know what's going on. So he says, wake up and start praying. And then he comes back, and they go back to sleep. And then he comes back, and then he says, Lord, if this is your will, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will. So now we see that Jesus' faith is changing to the, to the intent. He never tells his father no, but you can see that he's overwhelmed with the fact of what he has to do. It wasn't going to be easy to go to the cross, to face the mockery of the trial, to be insulted and criticized, and then give your life up, amen, and then he had to take it back up again. But it was a tremendous battle even for Jesus to accomplish this. And he spends a whole hour, another whole hour in prayer. And while he's saying that, his spirit man is adjusting to what he has to do. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Amen. It's harder for me now at my age to do the things that I do than it was when I was younger. Amen. It was harder. For, it's, it's harder to do things. It's more difficult, amen, and and there, <clears throat> excuse me, some days I would like to just pull the covers up over my head and just disappear, that I don't want to go out there and, and face the things that I have to face. There are people that are mean and rude. I've almost been in a number of accidents. There are other issues that have happened to me. Uh, we had this issue with Matthew and his dog, and on and on and on and on. There are more critical issues that we face. And I can't just say, well, God, I don't want to do this today. I don't, I don't feel like going through the trial today, Lord. Hello? I, I don't want to have to deal with these things, but rather the trial is coming to increase your faith. And if you're reading your Bible, your faith should be equal or stronger than what the trial is because he will not put on you more than you can bear. But if you want to go home and sit down and sleep and put your Bible on the mantle and not pray and not read your Bible and not meditate on God's Word, you can go home and do that. But I'm telling you, when the, when the bad trial comes, the devil is going to chew you up and spit you out. Hello. Come on, amen. I meet people all the time all the time that tell me, I don't understand why God is making me go through this. I meet people all the time that, that say, well, why does God, why did God allow that to happen to me? Well, you could, you could say any number, any of us could say that when we're going through a hard trial, but the whole purpose of it was to make us stronger, to develop our faith, amen, because we're going to go through greater and greater and greater things. Um, even, I've shared it many times, but I, I wish I could go back to when I first started in 1987, when I was over on Cucamonga and our water bill was $40 every two months. Hello. i take that today in a hot second. They couldn't, I mean, I'd do it like, yes, we'll do that. The bills were a lot less. The, and we actually had more people. And I realized that there was a journey that God put me on. And it has brought us to where we are tonight. But it doesn't change the fact that I got to believe for what we have need of. And we all do. We all have to believe for what God is, is, is wanting to do here in our church. And he's doing great things for us. And he's using us for his kingdom. And right here, he's using us to pray and minister to others. And we've been doing it over and over. And we've not ceased to pray for people since we've been here. Amen. And I realized that whether I like it or not, I'm going to have to develop my faith. 
because I've read the Bible, and I know the Bible says, I didn't write it, that at the end, there's going to be a time that's never been on the face of the earth. It'll be so bad. Hello. And I didn't write it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't write that part. If I did, if it was up to me, it wouldn't be that like that. But it's going to get that bad. The Bible says nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and earthquakes in different places, a blood and fire and pillars of smoke, earthquakes, etc. Whether we like it or not, it's coming. And if, if we are not prepared for it, amen, then we're not going to be what, what God wants us to be. And I meet people all the time, just for example, I'll just use one example. Uh, we use evaporative coolers in this building, and to me, they do just as good as our other system did at, at one-tenth the cost. And I talk to other ministers about what we do to help save money to help us uh, with the building. And I know people that won't do it. Hello? They refuse to because we want to be like the church up the street. Hello? And we want to be comfortable. And we want everything to go smooth. Can I get a witness? Amen. And we want things to be like we want them to be, even though we can't afford it. I don't want to go downtown and buy a Chevy or a Ford or a Toyota. I want a Maserati. Can I get a witness? You can't afford it. Can I get a witness? Amen. You're going to starve to death. Somebody told me the other day, I won't say what kind of car they have. One little electrical part went out and it was $500. It was a luxury car. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff with that kind of money for my little Toyota pickup. Hello. I mean, to tell you, I could do a lot of stuff on my vehicle for that. And so I don't I don't try to go where I can't afford. I have to go where I need to be. But if status is so critical to you, you, you can't accept the fact that your status is down here. Do you know the Bible says of Moses, I said it earlier, but uh, this morning, that he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. He was so humble. Moses, the great man of God, was so humble. He talked to those people, all 23,000 of them, that ended up with ground opening up and swallowed. He was willing to communicate with them, talk to them. And if God was so willing and wanted them to be a part of the ministry, he didn't have any opposition to it, but they weren't called to the ministry and they were trying to take over his position. Amen. But when God began to deal with them, they offered strange fire before the Lord and the ground opened up and swallowed 23,000 people. And it said many of them were the renowned in, in Israel. They mean, they were famous. That'd be like wiping out the people that's on TV. Can I get a witness? Just Ground open it up and they disappear. I'm preaching really good tonight. Amen. God did not intend for me to get saved and just sit down. Do you know how many people I know that sought the baptism of the Holy Ghost and finally got it, spoke in tongues, and sat down? And some of them haven't spoken tongues since. Some of them haven't used what God gave them for the kingdom. Amen. They just... It's like they graduated from high school. They got the diploma, and they don't use it for anything, really. Amen. They're done. And, and that isn't what it was for. It was for you to continue in the things of God. And I realized this has to develop. This, this absolutely has to develop. And we're running, and I know as we get older, I know people that, that have... Um, Afflictions, I also know that sometimes their job fizzles out. I know that sometimes things happen for people, and we don't know the reasons or the wherefore or why, but what it ends up being is our faith has to take over. Our faith has to take over. It, there's nothing else that we can rely on, nothing else we can do, and um, so, therefore, we have to develop what we've got, 
and we walk around with dynamite on the inside of us, but we act like we got nothing. Amen. And the Spirit of God is developing in Jesus, and it showed it here, that he was going to have to finish his, his job. He ran all the ungodly people out of the church, and he said, this place is called a house of prayer. And then he's about to go out into the garden and spend time praying. He didn't just tell other people you ought to pray. And that's what I tell people. I live by faith. You may not understand it, but I do. I have <clears throat> no idea who's going to show up. I have no idea where the money's coming from. I have no idea how things are going to go. But I've been doing this for 30 years, and I'll guarantee you it will show up sooner or later. God will send somebody. God will send more than one or whatever it takes and will give us the finances that we need to pay our bills. Amen. <clears throat> I'm not in charge of that. If I was, I'd have a gazillion dollars. Can I get a witness? It's by faith. It's trusting. It's developing it. Amen. And letting God pour in to our church when he wants to. But the reality of life is that if you don't get uh, pushed to the test, you do not grow. I don't know how many of you know that your bones grow in response to stress. When you were a kid and you uh, went out to play every day and you run and jumped and hooped and hollered and done all the things you did as a kid, you developed your bone structure in your body. Um, we kid about it now, but but I wish I had one-tenth energy that my granddaughter Madison has. That, that little girl can go and go and go and go. If you could bottle that up, you'd be a rich person. Amen. Hello. Amen. She goes and goes and goes and goes. And while she's going, she's developing. She's growing. And my grandson, or all of them really, all my grandchildren, they're developing their physical body while they exercise now. Amen. And they can easily run circles around me. I wish I could just do half of what they do. Amen. Now, when Jesus <clears throat> was in this situation, and he's knowing, he told his disciples, I'm going to come to the end of my ministry. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to have to go to the cross. And I'm going to be crucified. And on the third day, I'm going to rise again. Even the disciples didn't believe him. And he had a challenge because he's going to have to go do what the Father tells him to do, whether he gets any help or not. It's awful quiet in this place. Amen. And when Jesus was praying, what happened in the garden after he prayed the third time? He said, let's go, let's, Father, I'm willing to go, let's go. And the soldiers came, and all the disciples left him alone. Everybody left him, and he had to go to the cross all by himself. Is there anybody in here that you ever pray a prayer? Lord, would you please send me some help? Hello. Anybody ever, ever pray? I prayed that prayer a lot. Lord, would you please send me some help? Hello. And he had to go all by himself without the help of his disciples. And unfortunately, one of them is the one that betrayed him and sent the soldiers to find him in the garden because Judas knew where he was, where he would resort his, his time of prayer, where it would be. So we were working on this thing, and I realized that there is a a growth that needs to come to the body of Christ that isn't there right now. There's a, there's a growth that needs to be, and people need to work together to where the Spirit of God can use this for the kingdom because there, there are oppositions and criticisms, and uh, I, I hear things all the time about when now the church is the only place you can bash. I mean, you can ba can't bash anybody else, but you can still bash the church. And they allow people to do things, amen, that are contrary to even what's fair for other people. And what happens is that there's somebody 
has got to stand up for the rights of the church and for the rights of the Christian. Hello. And you're going to have to learn how to pray and trust God for what you have need of. And ain't nobody else out there but us. Hello. We got to learn how to develop it. And while Jesus was praying, he was developing himself to go and finish the work that he had to do. Um, I'm not going to try to go too much further tonight because the, uh, the, the message I have for next week is going to be picked up right about here. But God is dealing with me for the fact that um, when trials and tests come, they don't come just show up out of nowhere that somewhere in my life I have a weakness and God wants it to, to get stronger and so my, my trial is in that area of my weakness otherwise I wouldn't pray send me help if I could handle it myself I'd say I can handle this so it's just no problem but it's in an area where I need help and it takes effort to pray you have to go back to the Bible and read the promises where God said, I'll take care of you. If you could, if you could handle it yourself, you wouldn't have to do these things. But when you begin to go back there and develop it and exercise, you become stronger. And Jesus was getting stronger in the garden, amen. And when he was getting ready to leave, he said, Let's go. I'm ready to go and finish the race that my father and responsibility my father gave me. And he said, I want to go now, and I'm good. Well, let's go. And they arrested him, and they took him away. All the disciples took off, but he had prayed himself to a place that his strength was ready to go, and he was going to be made fun of. He was going to be beaten. He was. There's a lot of things that's going to happen to him. But in this process of our Christian life, um, there's a journey, amen, and life is a journey with a destination. And there's a journey we all have to make, and if we don't make it, we fail of the purpose that God placed us here, amen. Um, I saw another church this last week, last two weeks, that closed down. They painted over the sign. Uh, they repainting the building. I don't know who they're going to rent it to, but it's not a church anymore. The pastor's gone. The people are gone. Everybody's gone, and the church is gone. And uh, I forget how many. They say how many churches fail uh, in a year, but it's thousands. And there's a battle going on. And people are not taught properly on what they need to do for the church. And when they try to do things the way that somebody else does them, um, irregardless of what the Bible says, they find that it doesn't work, and then they fail. And it is a fact, it, uh, a fact uh, that... 50% of everyone that starts to pastor fails in the first two years and most of them in the first year, and they never go back. One in every four pastors moves every year. And so they don't even stay in the, in the church that they're in for more than one year at a time. And 60% and of people have problems other than finances. That covers a lot of territory, by the way. And so, therefore, there's issues in the church that faith and hope and love and, and, and forgiveness and those types of abilities would help them be successful in the ministry, but they don't develop it. They keep praying for money. Give me money. I need more money. I need lots of money. Send me more money. Give me a thousand and you'll get five thousand back. Send me five thousand, you'll get ten thousand back. You won't get nothing. You'll just be out a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, and that guy will be five thousand dollars richer. Amen. So let's let's think about this. If Jesus had to do this, 
if Jesus had to develop, where are we tonight? If Jesus prayed three hours to get himself under subjection to do the will of God, where are we at tonight? I've thought about it many times, and there's lots of days I have no idea what I need to do to fix the problem. I just know I can't go anywhere else because this is where he sent me. That was the statement of the disciples when everybody left him, and they, they, Jesus said, will you also go away? And they said, you are the only one that have the words to eternal life. Nobody else can give us eternal life but you, and we're sure that you're the son of the living God, and nobody does what you've done in this earth. We've watched you do these great things. And I realize if Jesus goes through these issues, amen, then we have to do it. I'm preaching to me tonight. I love it when Jesus went down to John in the Jordan and he told John, I need you to baptize me. And John looked at him. He said, you need to baptize me, not me baptize you. You got this in reverse. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so now, for thus it will fulfill all righteousness. In other words, Jesus had to get baptized in water. And somebody had to baptize him. And so he went and submitted to to John. And when he baptized, when he was baptized in the, in the River Jordan, and he went under the water and came back up, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, descended on Jesus in that Jordan River. And you can find no miracles that took place before that day. You cannot find it in the New Testament where that happened. But when the Holy Spirit descended on the Lord Jesus Christ, great and mighty things began to happen in his ministry. Amen. And without us growing and developing, we're not going to get where we need to be as a, as a kingdom, as a church, uh, or, or just an individual. Amen. And many of us, if, if we're honest about it, and I run across a lot of people, just like I did this last week, that they don't go to the hospital to visit. They don't pray for people. They don't, they're not submissive to God, doing the things that God wants them to do. They let their own flock just go out there. Jesus says the hireling, amen, sees the wolf coming, and he just runs the other way, and the wolf catches the sheep and kills them, amen. He don't go try to kill the wolf or the bear or the lion like I talked about David today. David wasn't afraid. He went out there and Killed a bear in the line, a wolf come. That would have been an easy day for David. Amen. Come on. He killed him. He said, that's my father's sheep. My father will beat the tar out of me if I let this bear and lion and get the sheep. Can I get a witness? Amen. If you make your living that way, you don't want nobody to mess with the sheep. Amen. I feel the same thing about my dogs. Don't touch my dogs. Can I get a witness? Amen. Don't mess with my dogs. Hello, yeah, you're going over the top of me before you get to the dog, amen. <laughs> the way my dogs are, though, you have to go past them to get to me. <laughs> amen. But I'd be out there, we're going we're gonna to do our best to protect them. And as, as I, I've been praying and studying on this matter, and we're going to share some more, especially on Sunday, that... Just for example, coming to this building, we never paid more for a building than we did for this one. We literally could not qualify for a loan to do this on our own individually. We were independent when we came here. And so I I went to the bank. I've been to several banks It's not like I didn't go. How much do we qualify for? I knew what we qualified for. And they wanted more for this building than what we had. But Sister Mary Lee kept pushing, and finally uh, they said, we're going to blame it on Sister Mary Lee tonight. And 
the pastor said, why don't we go to Foursquare and see if they can help us and we'll work a deal because they were going to sell this to somebody other than Foursquare. And they said, if you want to become Foursquare, maybe we could work something out. Anyway, we went through the whole ordeal and they worked it out to where they actually co-signed the loan for us to get this building. Y'all not listen to me. Do you know how many people out there are trying to get a building tonight? Amen. Do you know how many people would love to have any kind of big building, much less one as nice as this one? Hello. They can't do it. Amen. Many of them fail, as I said, 50%. Can't even get uh, two years in. Amen. And they're done. <laughs> Amen. You, you don't know what I went through. The, oh, God, how are we never going to do this one? Amen. How are we going to make the payment on this for it? Then, If you don't know, this is our 15th year here, and we have made every single payment, no matter how much it was, no matter how hard, no matter what, every single payment. Hello. And this is the best one we've ever had. And now we have other churches that actually help support us as well. And so we're in a place that God wanted us to be, amen. And that's what I'm talking about. When I left my job at Ace, I realized God wanted me to come and pastor. But I can't stay at Ace and come and pastor here. Uh, when I first started, our church was in a disaster, to say the least, amen. And I had no idea. I had absolutely no guarantee for any kind of salary, much less anything else. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. But I knew the voice of God and I knew God wanted me to do this. And as we began to go, God began to give us miracles. He began to open doors and more and more things began to happen for us. But if I would have stayed at A's, I'd have been in trouble because those guys moved to Prescott, Arizona. And you know how many people they took with them? They, th they took three people with them. And guess what? I wouldn't have been one of them. Amen. I would have been out of a job. Uh, Y'all not listen to me. I would have been way out of a job. And it was hard enough getting one then. Amen. And um, I don't know if you follow business procedures and stuff, but there's a lot of people when you turn 35, they will not hire you. And when you're older, they certainly won't hire you. Hello. Hello. No, I don't know what the issues are. Yeah, but they don't hire you. But also, it's training and teaching. And if you're not younger where they can bring you up in their business, and by the time you're 35, I mean, I don't know why they think it, but you're over the hill and you ain't never going to make it and whatever. Uh, my son found the same thing in professional football, and I don't know what age they set. But when you get to a certain age, if you haven't made it in professional football, they won't hire you. It's not about how good you are or whatever. They won't hire you. And they do all kinds of other stuff. That you, you have to prove it. But there, if you took the professional sports and lined it up with the, with the labor code, you'd have to fire every professional team out there. You would have to find them and kick them off the planet for the abuse of the of the labor codes that is in the world today. They do not follow. It. They sign a people up for a certain amount of money. If they make one mistake, they kick them off the team. They had some... I'll get in trouble. The labor codes are very specific on, on what they state, but they can do things being an athletic team then get away with stuff that you just couldn't. If you owned a business here locally, if you did that, they would be on your doorstep tomorrow. Amen. Our intent is to live for God irregardless of what the world does. And Jesus had to accomplish something so that we could even be here tonight, and 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 it took Jesus' effort to do it. He didn't. He couldn't just. He didn't just stroll around one day and, okay, today you can hang me on the cross and you can make fun of me and I'll just I'll take it like a man and we'll go to Herod's palace and then 
you can bring me back to Pilate's Judgment Hall and and beat me like a like a with the cat of nine tails. And it'll be no problem. I'll just do it. Amen. It'll be like a like a walk in the park. Are you kidding me? What 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 a challenge that was. He knew what was going to happen, and he had to submit to God and take the beating and go to Herod. Herod, Herod was a moron. Do you know later on he got up and made a pompous speech and God struck him dead and a worm ate the guy? What does that testify what kind of person that guy was? He's a, a moron. I'm going to get in trouble. Somebody's going to write me a letter for that one. Amen. He was crazy. And Jesus faced it all. And, 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 and what I'm talking about, he had to develop himself to get there. Now, I'm going to close with this. I had a dream a lot of years ago, many years ago. And the Lord showed me a weight room. And he said, when you lift all these weights, you'll get to do what you want to do. Now, my son Matthew lifts weights. He started when he was 18, and he's 36 now. When he was 18, he was a buck 50, about 150 pounds. Okay? If you don't know what a buck 50 is, that's 150 pounds. Hello. And he started lifting weights, and he started talking to people. And they taught him nutrition. They taught him how to lift weights correctly. They taught him what to do and how to do it. And he kept talking to other people. He talked to weightlifters, football players. He talked to everybody. And they told him how they did it, how they exercise. Uh, James, <laughs> James had one of his offensive linemen on his football team when he played in NFL Europe. And the guy was so strong, he picked James up, my son James, and turned him sideways. Amen. <laughs> Hello. And Matthew saw that kind of stuff, and he wanted to have that kind of strength. So he started pumping iron. He didn't do it in a day. He didn't do it in a year. It's been whatever, 15, 18 years, whatever it is, 16 years. And he began to pump, and pretty soon he went from 125 pounds to 150 to 175 to 200 and 225 and 250, and he kept going. And today he works out with over 400 pounds, and he can he can he can press standing up. He can press over 500 pounds. He told me once, you can't discipline me anymore. I said, I can't. I'm just gonna wait till you're asleep, and I'm gonna smack you good, and then get out of here. Amen. You'll be looking for me when you wake up. I'm going to be gone. Amen. <laughs> I saw a guy with a T-shirt once, and I don't mean this wrong. It just said, old age and treachery, treachery will always overcome youth and skill. <laughs> I'm smarter than you are. Amen. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. One of my bosses asked me, we got to close, but I worked in a machine shop in a real heavy cabinet we had. He wanted it to move. And he, wanted, he said, I want you to help me, and I'm going to go get the forklift. I said, I don't think we need it, but you do what you got to do. I went over to the sink, and they had liquid dish soap by the sink. I squirted it on the floor. I pushed the cabinet right where he wanted it. Amen. I went to got the mop and I mopped up the soap. Amen. And when I came back, the cabinet was exactly where he wanted it to be. 
And he said, how in the world did you do that? He had the forklift, amen. I said, you see that little bottle of soap over there, a little, little on the floor, and slide it over and clean it up? I said, look pretty good, doesn't it? Amen. My mother didn't raise no fool. Can I get a witness? Amen. I don't take 80 people to move his cabinet. <laughs> Amen. And in all humility, in all humility, all of us, through the grace of God, can develop our faith to the place it needs to be if we'll exercise it. If my son can lift 500 pounds, in the physical, then we could live 500 pounds in the spiritual. Hello. We can develop ourselves to be able to be victorious. Now, I heard, I've heard many songs on it, but God is talking to me about being victorious. Not over one thing, over everything. I'm, I'm helping me tonight, amen. He said, I want you to be victorious over everything. I don't care what spirit it is. I don't care what promise it is. I don't care what it is. I want you to be victorious because I've given you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want you to be victorious, amen. I don't want you second place, third place, fourth place. You're going to be number one. You're going to win, and the devil is not going to have any authority or, or victory over your life whatsoever. And I see that, that, that God is just pouring out his spirit, and we're hearing, and I'm seeing more and more things happening. I wish other people could see it. I wish people would 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 be as excited as I get about it. When I read this letter from these military people, when I, the people of the first grade class and all these other things that have happened to us, it looks like to me sometimes when we testify these great things, people looking at us like, well, so, you know, God did it. I mean, you know, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you know, another miracle. And then I'm like, don't you get this? Amen. These people went through a hurricane and it couldn't touch them. Amen. They went through a hurricane. You know, this lady had a hematoma and it's gone and she's going to have her baby. Amen. We're praying for people and miracles are happening and people are acting like, well, I don't know. You know, it's just another miracle. You know, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah, we should be running the aisles for what God is doing in this place. Amen. It's great to be a part of the family of God. Can you say amen? Would you turn to your neighbor tonight and tell him, God's going to bless you. Come on, God's going to bless you. God is going to bless you. Something fierce. <laughs> amen. Well, let's bow our heads and let's ask God's blessing. Father, we thank you tonight yet again for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we realize you want to develop our faith, and there are great things that we do have to face, but they're not greater than you. And so, therefore, let your Holy Spirit come down upon us, or just like you bless my son with his weightlifting, Lord, may you bless us with our spiritual weightlifting, that we be successful and victorious over everything that comes our way that we don't surrender back down or let the enemy get any kind of a foothold in our lives, but that we learn how to stand strong in the Word of God and obtain the victories that we need for ourselves and our family and our church. And, Lord, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. And we ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Let's give him a clap offering tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to go ahead and dismiss in a word of prayer, but I want to make the announcement again. We're going to do our Mother's Day on uh, May the 5th. 
and uh, anybody you want to invite would be special. Next Sunday is Easter. Please be in prayer for it, and please invite people out. We believe that God wants to use us to help other people. So let's invite somebody. And we're going to ask Sister Mary Lee, would you dismiss us? Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful service and a message that we can take home with us. Being Easter week, we thank you for what it means. We always grieve over what a price you paid. But when we think of it and realize that that was the way that you had of buying our souls and, and our ability to have salvation, we're just so grateful that it ended up with you rising from the dead, be, being in our hearts now. Lord, you said you were within us, yes, and we feel your presence. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the truth of the thank gospel, you, for the Bible that tells us yes, the truth. Thank you, Lord. And we pray that as we go home, you, we will rejoice yes. and bless our families with hope yes. and with uh, looking up instead of down. Yes because this is the greatest thing that anyone could ever think of, that we would have our souls paid for by your sacrifice. We love you. We ask that you'll take us to our homes and bring us back again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you tonight. If you would greet someone before you leave, and thank you for coming tonight. God bless you.